my third video. This video is going to be about my inspiration that comes from anthropology. Because I'm an anthropology major. Yeah, I'm not I'm not an English major. So I feel like the most interesting subfield of anthropology to me is medical anthropology. The focus of medical anthropology in the cultural subdivision, which is my focus, is really on how different cultures and different peoples perceive sickness, how they relate sickness to the body, how they perceive cures, and stuff like that. From this viewpoint, I feel like my poems really focus on the human body most of the time. I never mean for that to happen. I don't sit down and think like, oh, this is totally going to turn into a metaphor for the human body, or the human body is totally going to be a metaphor for this. But for some reason, it always seems to come up again. I'm going to read a poem now that I wrote with a lot of anthropology influence. And I also wrote it with the slam poetry contest in mind, so it does have a performative aspect to it. This is my poem, Uplifting or Assorted Losses. Oh my, how you hold me up. How you curl your fingers beneath my shoulders and lift. I remember that child feeling, but I dream it different. I dream it that I am not, that I am, that my shoulders rip apart when I am raised. They detach, detach, and my arms fall away, the way a bird's wings fall back when it crashes into clear glass, and it tips over and over, the wings pulling down, feathers still poised for pivot. But you keep lifting, and I do not fall. I stay up. Do you see no beauty in halcyon hearts? Ones that stay resting in their cradle of roots? My heart has escaped out the left shoulder socket, pushed up by your thumbs, sliced by the metaphorical cradle of roots. Too warm to separate nicely, only the outside has precision. The rest is goo mess, seeping to mix with more literal roots. I make spit and hair binding. I want put down back with the rest. I think I remember sorry dream wrong, and I'm trying new synonyms for your name, ones that I think mean forgetting. I need it all back before, but when you hold me up to the light, do my ribs shine through paper skin like poison oracle diviners arranged so you might see futures? So the anthropologiness of this poem comes from a lot of different places in the anthropology aspects. As far as poison oracle diviners go, that comes from an anthropological study out of Africa where to test someone's innocence or guilt, they actually poison chickens. And if the chicken dies, the person is guilty of whatever crime they're accused of. If the chicken lives, the person is innocent. I found that really interesting because you're taking all the responsibility away from people and placing it in the outcome of whether an animal lives or dies when it is poisoned. And most of the time, the animal is going to die. And in small tribes, I feel like it is really important not to have the blame on anyone. The problems of blame are avoided because the responsibility is not on a person, it's on whether an animal is going to live or die. And I don't want to dissect my own poem because I don't really think about that sort of stuff when I write. I think about it afterwards, think of why that stuff came up in my writing, and then I try to perfect it. Thanks for watching once again, and I'll see you next video.